It's now time for the Billy C Show. Part of the BillyCBoxing.com network. And we're coming to you live from the Billy C. Studios in Lake George, New York. I'm Bill Calagero, and it's time for the Billy C. Show. Good morning, good day, good evening, whenever you're watching, whenever you're listening. I hope you're doing okay today. Today's show is being brought to us in part, and actually, it's being brought to us in full by my book. Tom Molino from Bondage to Better Spin of the Planet is available right now where all good books are sold. Get yourself a copy right now, Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. Or drop me an email, bill at billycboxing.com for your copy. Hey, listen, uh, I uh, am doing this show right now. I'm actually a day and a half early. Normally, we broadcast live on Thursday uh, evenings, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. That's New York Time for you people that don't know what Eastern Time is. Uh, But uh, I forgot that uh, I have an appointment tomorrow, so I didn't want to get everybody PO'd at me, so I figured I would do a quick show now, so anybody that tunes in to Billy C. Boxing tomorrow at 5.30 or goes to our YouTube page, uh, they will find this very show. And speaking of YouTube, uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube uh, uh, show, our page, and uh, don't forget about uh, our podcast as well. Listen, I want to give you my thoughts on, my post-fight thoughts on uh, Ryan Garcia's uh, fight over Oscar uh, Duarte. Uh, In case you missed it, it took place uh, in Houston, Texas this past Saturday night. And uh, Ryan Garcia uh, improved to 21, uh, I'm sorry, 24 wins, one loss, 20 of his wins coming by knockout when he stopped Duarte uh, in the, uh, uh, what what round was that? Uh, Eighth round, I'm sorry, uh, at two minutes and 51 seconds. Uh, My thoughts before I give you some quotes. Um, First of all, I, I like Ryan Garcia. I, I know that, you know, he fell short against Tank Davis. And we talked a little bit last week about uh, the stuff that was going on uh, with uh, him and his uh, promoters. Um, and, um, you know, I, I heard some recent comments from Oscar De La Hoya uh, saying that he doesn't know if, if the kid is right. Um, you know, and, and I loved listening to B-Hop. B Hop. Uh, look. Bernard Hopkins, we had him on this show uh, when we were in Vegas. Uh, I've been meaning to catch up with him. Uh, I might even fly out uh, to Golden Boy uh, Promotions to uh, sit and talk with uh, both B-Hop and Oscar. I've had a bunch of stuff, but one of the things I want to give kudos to B-Hop for is telling it like it is. You know, I I mean, that's one of my problems uh, in this sport. Uh, The reason why people don't like me uh, is because I tell it like it is. Uh, I tell it how it is as far as I feel, and it's my opinion, you know, and I don't give a shit what anybody thinks. I'm going to tell you the way I feel, you know, and if you don't like it, don't watch, you know what I mean? What can I tell you? Uh, and B-Hop's the same way, and uh, we had a lot of fun in Vegas together uh, when I did uh, an interview with him, and I would love to uh, get back uh, and, uh, and get with him again. But uh, at the end of the day, Ryan Garcia looked, uh, you know, He's fun to watch, right? But this fight, um, I, you know, I, 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 I was more impressed with Duarte. I know that sounds crazy, uh, but, you know, he, he lost the fight and he was stopped. Um, but, I, you know, to tell you the truth, I think if Oscar Duarte let his hands go, I mean, this was an aggressive fighter. The guy was like a bull, okay? Um, yeah, he got stopped, um, but, uh, but he was like a bull. He, he literally... Didn't have any head movement uh, or any defense, so to speak. His defense was his offense, but he wasn't throwing enough punches. He was pressing the action and forcing Ryan Garcia to to pull uh, a Floyd Mayweather and dance all around the ring. Uh, But the problem with that was that I think if he cut off the ring just a little bit more and threw punches when he had uh, Ryan uh, trapped in the... uh, uh, in the corners, he, it might have been a different outcome. It looked like the body shots were affecting Ryan Garcia. Uh, and then I want to talk about uh, this uh, uh, 
roll, the shoulder roll that he started doing. Um, look, you know, I, I mean, the, the Mayweathers perfected the shoulder roll. A, a lot of people have tried it. Um, but, you know, if you don't fully understand it and, and you don't use it the right way, you're going to look the way Ryan Garcia looked in that fight. I mean, he's, he's leaning in his shoulder. He's trying to, trying to, you know, use his shoulder as a defense, but he was leaving himself wide open and he was getting nailed. He was getting nailed. You know, I mean, the beauty of the shoulder roll with, with Floyd was you couldn't really hit him, but he was still in a position to, to, to land a punch on you. You know, I mean, he wasn't an aggressive fighter by any means, but if he was, he would have, he, he, that, that's been my argument with him. I mean, I, I, I don't think we ever saw the best of Floyd, but the truth of the matter is, is that if Ryan Garcia, because Duarte was having trouble getting past that, um, I think that if, uh, uh, if, if Ryan Garcia was able to throw punches from uh, that angle, it, it would have ended a, a, lot, uh, uh, a lot sooner. Um, the thing is, 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 you know, at the end of the fight, <coughs> excuse me, Garcia, he said, and I quote, I want to become a world champion. I want Raleigh's next. He was referring to WBA, uh, junior welterweight world champion, Rolando Romero, uh, who's 15 and one with 13 knockouts. Uh, he went on to say, everyone kept asking me why Oscar Duarte, he's so tough. I thought I would get him out in a second or third, but he was like a rock. I felt like me and Derek have a lot to build on after this fight. I told everyone I'm committing to become a world champion. If Raleigh's wants that, bring it on, Raleigh's. I know you talk a lot. Let's get it going. Where you at, Raleigh? Uh, you got beat up by that old dude, referring to Ismail Pissarro. Uh, we know what happened. Don't try to fake it. Um, you know, I I ironically enough, uh, Duarte's battle cry all week leading up to the fight was how Ryan Garcia was a quitter and he had no heart, heart after his loss to Tank Davis. Um, the truth of the matter is, is I, I kind of was, <laughs> I, I like Ryan Garcia. I, I think that, you know, he's, he's, he's got a lot of talent. I was more impressed with Duarte for some strange reason. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I just, you know, the truth of the matter is, is um, I, th I think Garcia, and, and, you know, he's talking about uh, his trainer, Derek uh, Gaynor, and, and the truth of the matter with that was he wasn't listening to his trainer. And apparently, you know, he's gone through, what, three or four trainers since he's turned pro, I mean, in his early 20s. Um, the kid does have to stop believing his own press clippings. If he could take the sport a little more serious and, uh, and get his, uh, you know, straighten his ass out um, mentally, I think this kid could could be a player, you know. I, I think he needs to work on his defense and everything else. Hey, I want to give a shout out to uh, the guys in the chat room right now. I know I sprung this show on everybody pretty, pretty, uh, pretty soon. I, I I didn't even know I was going to do it till about ten minutes ago. Uh, so At and my man Team Batman uh, Boxing, I'm glad you're here, uh, and uh, everybody else that's watching, uh, and anybody that's going to be watching or listening tomorrow. Um, some other fights that took place. Uh, this past weekend, uh, and by the way, uh, the uh, Garcia fight was uh, broadcast on The Zone. Uh, it was promoted by uh, Golden Boy Promotions, um, and over uh, also on The Zone. It was a busy weekend. Uh, we thought we were going to see the return of uh, former uh, two-time world title challenger Michael Conlon. Uh, the fight was broadcast live. Matchroom Boxing was the uh, promoter, and The Zone was the broadcast. Uh, was uh, in Northern Ireland, Belfast, and uh, it didn't work out for Conlon. Uh, he lost. He was uh, stopped uh, by journeyman uh, uh, Jordan Gill. I, I shouldn't really call him a journeyman, but he improved to Gill improved to twenty eight wins, two losses, and a draw with nine wins coming by knockout. Really not known uh, to be a, a, a heavy handed uh, puncher. Conlon uh, drops to twenty seven three and one. Um, it was. Uh, uh, a minute and nine seconds of the seventh round. That was uh, when it was officially over. Um, you know, this is his second straight knockout loss. Um, and, uh, um, uh, hey, yeah, AT is just making sure I know who he is. He's in He's in Canada. Hey, I want to come back to Montreal, man. I was talking to my man, uh, Blaze Robbins, Johnny Blaze, I should say. And uh, I told him uh, I, I, the fire's been lit. And uh, Canada, you know, we did real well in Canada, so uh, who knows. Um, 
You know, one of the things I like about Eddie Hearn is Eddie Hearn tells it like it is. You know, he said after this fight, and, and I'll paraphrase, basically, this is what he said. He said, um, it's almost going to be impossible for Conlon to return after this KO loss to Gill. Um, pretty heavy stuff if you think about it, you know. Um, but it's true, you know. So, uh, uh, yeah, and, and uh, Batman Boxing's agreeing. Uh, so uh, another fight that flew under my radar, and it's the last one I'm going to mention uh, this, from this past weekend, is because I, I didn't realize it was the same guy until, it, you know, until after uh, the results came in. But uh, former uh, two-division world champion uh, Felix Sturm, yeah, that guy, 44 years old, right? Uh, he improved to 44 wins, six losses, and three draws with 19 of his wins coming by knockout when he scored a ninth-round stoppage over Sucru uh, Alte, uh, who drops to 15-4 and four, uh, in Germany. Um, he fought in February, won a uh, unanimous decision, and, um, you know, uh, he's looking for another shot. I, you know, I, you know, it's fighters today definitely um, fight a little longer, you know, but I, I think, and, and a lot of that you could contribute to better conditioning, better uh, uh, nutrition, um, you know, a guy's room in, in seemingly better shape, it seems. Um, or, you know, just humans are in general. I mean, remember when a fighter was uh, 32 years old back in the day, they were washed up old fighter. You know, a 21 year old is uh, uh, is the, uh, uh, you know, prime time, you know, real quick. I'll answer uh, uh, Andy's question. He says, what do you think of the heavyweights card on December 23rd? I love it. I can't wait to watch that card. That, that's one of the cards I'm looking forward to. There's a lot of fights on that card. He's talking about the pay-per-view uh, on the zone. Wilder and Joseph Parker, Anthony Joshua against Otto Wallen. First of all, both of those fights are good. If Joseph Parker can, can uh, you know, stay away and box Wilder, he's got a really good chance. Otto Wallen, come on. You know, he's, he's a good fighter. Anthony Joshua, uh, chin is uh, uh, a little suspect. We know that. Dimitri Bivol. A uh, guy that I would like to see uh, rematch Canelo, even though he doesn't have nothing to prove. I just think Canelo will, will want that against Lyndon Arthur. Daniel Dubois, Triple D, is taking on Jarrell Miller. Like that fight. I like that fight. Uh, Frank Sanchez, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty high on him. Taking on Junior Fa and uh, a couple other fights on that one. Uh, some other young uh, heavyweights. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, also... Uh, don't forget Inoue, uh, take him fighting on the 26th, uh, January kicks off, Beater Beeb against Callum Smith, and then something that I just wanted to uh, mention, uh, it was announced and confirmed that uh, um, uh, Mugaya, Jamie Mugaya, 42-0 and with 33 knockouts, has taken on John Ryder, uh, January 27th in Phoenix, uh, the zone will televise that. I like this fight. You know, Magaya is a is a good fighter, but he, you know he's got a lot of he's take, he takes too many pun takes too many punches. He's a he's a fighter that's got no defense. But man, does he just keep coming forward? I mean, he's he's exciting to watch because he's never out, and he's fighting John Ryder. You know, I, I I didn't know much about John Ryder until he was on the undercard of uh, Canelo, and uh, I can't recall if it was Canelo and Sergey Kovalev or Canelo and. Danny Jacobs, I, I was at both of those fights in Vegas, and um, uh, I can't remember which, I, I, I'm almost, I, I almost think it was against Daniel Jacobs, he was on the undercard, and um, I, I hadn't, I hadn't seen much uh, with Jonathan Ryder, and uh, he looked real good that night, he ended up getting himself a fight with Canelo, which was his last fight, Um He's a real deal fighter, and he's he's. I think this is going to be a good fight, you know. Um, and um, after it was announced, they had their uh, press conference the other day. Jamie Magaya says, "I'm real happy to return to the ring. I'm excited to be with my people from Phoenix. We know that Ryder Ride, is a dangerous rival, but we're prefer, prepared for it. Uh, we have not stopped training and preparing. I'm also very happy to have added Freddie Roach and his team to my camp." We're going to give a great night of boxing to everybody watching. If, if we overcome this great test, I hope to see you all again in May. Uh, viva Mexico. Um, you know, uh, Freddie Roach, no disrespect to Freddie Roach. Uh, you know, obviously he's got uh, a great 
uh, resume. I, I just think, you know, again, I, I tell it, I give you my, my honest opinion. I, I just, I, you know, I watch him in the corners. Um, I, I don't see him, you know, like I, the communication has got to be a communication gap uh, between him and his fighters. Um, I know he's the lead guy when the fight time comes. I, I know a lot of, of the training leading up to the fight, you know, he's he's not really that guy. But um, I, I just, you know, to bring him on into your camp, I mean, it, there's got to be. I know there's too many rah-rah men out there. I complain about the sport all the time and the fact that we don't have uh, many uh, uh, good trainers slash teachers anymore. we got a lot of rah-rah men. Yeah, go, go, do this, go ahead, blah, 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 blah. You know, uh, Freddie Roach is definitely not one of those, but, um, you know, there's got to be. I, I wish, I hope there are uh, better options. That's all I'm saying. For, for a fighter, um, you know, that, that could use some actual fine-tuning like Mugaya. You know, if he could learn uh, a little better defense, uh, maybe incorporate a jab a little bit. Um, you know, it's a dangerous cat if he could do those couple of couple of little things, which is, uh, you know, kind of kind of like, you know, everybody should do that if they're going to box. But uh, John Ryder, uh, he likes to let his, uh, uh, you know, voice be heard inside the ring. Uh, he said, uh, I'm glad this fight's been made. I'm looking forward to kick 2020 off 2024 off with a bang and I'll make a statement on January 27th. And, and and that's what I like. That's what I like uh, about boxing. When a fighter basically doesn't get all caught up in the bullshit. You know, I can't stand all of this fluff that's been going on with the with the pre-fight hype. And uh, I'm going to do this. And I get him in the ring. And I'm going to do this. You know, and then they do nothing. They run around. And then they hug and kiss at the end of the fight. It's all a bunch of bullshit. And I really don't think. I, I hope that the fans of today don't fall for that crap, okay? Uh, you know, it's. It, I think some do, you know? I mean, you know, I, I don't think that there's a fight that I've ever uh, wanted to see because of the trash talking at press conferences. I, 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 don't, I don't think so. I don't think there's ever been a fight that because of, you know, fighter A or fighter B said this, that, and the other thing, uh, now I'm going to watch it. Nah, you know, I kind of watch... The fight, if I think it's going to be competitive, well, now I watch, you know, obviously when I'm involved with this show, we're in our 21st year, um, you know, I watch them all. But but the truth of the matter is, is the ones I'm real psyched for are the ones that, you know, you're not sure who's going to win, you know, I, which is hard today. Most of them, it is an A side and a B side, and the A side typically wins, you know. So, I mean, all you got to do is look in Vegas, look at the lines, and you can see it. Oscar De La Hoya. Uh, one of the co-promoters of this event said on January 27th, the next Mexican super, superstar of the sport will officially be crowned. His name is Jamie, Jamie Mugaya, whether it's in person or at home or on the zone. Fans shouldn't miss watching Mugaya do what Canelo couldn't, knock out John Ryder. You know, don't you love when Oscar De La Hoya gives these subtle little you know, uh, jabs at people that uh, either screwed him or walked away from him? I'm not saying Canelo screwed him. Um, but uh, Canelo just didn't need him anymore. Eddie Hearn said last time out, it was Canelo. Uh, assignments in boxing don't get much more intense than that, but John handled himself superbly, delivered one of the bravest performances I've seen, and won plenty of new fans. John's reward is another fight with a brilliant Mexican fighter. Jamie is a massive talent and a future superstar of the sport but we believe John is the biggest test of his career, and we're confident John will hand Jamie a, his first defeat. Um, you know, I, I love Eddie Hearn, and the reason why is because Eddie Hearn and Oscar De La Hoya, I, I, and to be honest with you, I, I hope that Eddie Hearn and Oscar De La Hoya can build a strong alliance between the two because if uh, Golden Boy Promotions and Eddie Hearn's matchroom boxing start collaborating and really, you know, start working together, we're going to get some great fights. And I'll tell you, the reason is because they're not afraid to put their fighters in. And they both recognize that a loss shouldn't ruin a fight's, fighter's career. So I, I hope those two uh, continue working together for a long, long time um, and, uh, and go from there. Um, one other thing I'm going to uh, mention, excuse me, is... Um, December 16th is Showtime's 
uh, last boxing card. All I could say is, I can't wait for Showtime to get the hell off the broad broadcast in fights. I, I just can't stand them. And it's not Showtime. I used to love it when Steve Farhood was was on there with, with uh, Al Bernstein. Um, I, I mean, you know, I know that, that Steve does the, the unofficial scorecards and Bernstein's still there as, as uh, Showtime's puppet. And, and I, I could just see his blood curdling. But Mario Ronaldo, this guy ruined it. It ruined it. He ruined the network. And uh, Steven Espinosa, who, uh, Espinosa, I should say, uh, you know, with, with the way he is. I mean, and then their alliance with the PBC. It, it, they destroyed themselves. They destroyed themselves. And uh, if they ever come back, I hope they, they revamp their boxing team. Um, but, uh, but I'm glad that they're going because I never want to see or hear Mario Ronaldo again. I think he, he was just made the broadcast sickening. I used to uh, watch it with the, uh, uh, with the sound off because he ruined it, you know. Um, the, the card isn't even a great one. Uh, and I love the way when they broadcast this, they say, you know, uh, the WBA's regular super middleweight champion, David Morrell, who incidentally has got less than 10 fights. He's 9-0 with eight knockouts. He's scheduled to take on Cena Abeko. Uh, Agbeko is 28 wins, two losses, 22 of his wins coming by knockout. Uh, that's supposed to be the main event. Um, but the fight that's on that card that I, I may tune in just to watch um, uh, is uh, Julio Cesar Martinez. I love this kid. I love watching him. He, he's, he's the original en Energizer Bunny, man. Uh, he's going to be defending his WBC flyweight belt against uh, Angelino uh, Cordoba. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, my man uh, Andy's asking me what my thoughts about for this weekend's card with uh, Haney and Progress. You know, I haven't picked a fighter yet. I'm, I'm leaning towards Progress, and, I, and I'll tell you why. Devin Haney's moving up in weight. Um, I, I, Progress is, is probably one of the hardest uh, punchers that Haney uh, is going to have to uh, face. Uh, I give Haney a lot of credit. Uh, you know, I'm probably the minority here, but I... I, I even though he keeps winning and he keeps shutting me up, but I was never impressed with Haney. I'm sorry. You know, uh, Regis progress. I, I'm leaning towards him. Uh, he's another guy that I think, um, feels that he's being, uh, uh, not getting an, enough credit. I, I think it's gonna be a great fight. I really do. And I would love nothing more for, uh, Haney to prove me wrong, but I'm leaning towards progress. Um, you know, uh, my man unofficial officials in the chat room telling me I'm going to miss uh, Mario. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I, I can guarantee you that I won't miss him. You know, he, he just, he, ever since the first time I ever heard him, you know, and he's, uh, you know, he comes up with all the, the, the stupid sayings and stuff. And, and you know what? Originally, a, a couple of times here and there, it was kind of funny. I, I like that kind of shit, you know, but he just, it, it became about him. You know, and then when they have him, when Brian Custer would have him on the, uh, uh, you know, beforehand when they have the, the, the pre-fight discussion, um, you know, he, he would go there and, you know, he, he just, I don't think he knows the sport. He's so WWF or E or whatever the hell he was involved with. And, uh, you know, then when the whole boo-hoo-hoo, -hoo, he's battling depression, everybody gets depressed, you know? I mean, come on. You know, boo-hoo, you know, sorry, Moralo. Then, you know, then all his different looks, remember? The, the the buzz cut with nothing. Then all of a sudden he's got this jet black hair. You know, come on. You know what? You know, maybe he's going bald like like me, you know. And except I've always said to myself, hey, if I'm going to go bald, I'm going to go bald like a man. I'm not going to I'm not going to have a comb over. You know, I'm I'm about ready to start shaving my head because there's a little left up there. But I don't want that. You know, I don't want that side and, and the, the you know, the ass ape look, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I don't want that, you know. And, and the other thing is I don't want to do the comb over where you got to walk sideways in the wind. Come on, man. You know, if you're going to go bold, go bold like a man. You know, if you're going to go gray, go gray like a man. You don't need to get the, uh, I don't want to plug it, but, you know, the stuff that makes you not gray. But uh, anyway, um, unofficial official saying he wants progress to win. Uh, I don't know how uh, he lands with that foot. Yeah, he's got some crazy footwork, you know, and that's, uh, you know, the funny thing about it is a lot of these fighters, today um they're not fundamentally sound they may have 
uh, a couple of good strengths and then bam, you know, they get coddled all the way up till they got 20 wins and next thing you know, they're being handed a belt and, uh, and all of a sudden they're the champion, you know. And then they, uh, then they lose, and then all of a, everybody says, oh, they were exposed. Yeah, it was exposed. Yeah, well, you know what? Listen, I got into this the other day, uh, either on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. And you know what? I don't blame the fighters. I don't blame the fighters. Because a fighter today is just like any other fighter in any other era. They got to have the balls to get in the ring and fight another guy. Because at the end of the day, it's only those two. You know, you hear the, the teams, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. We're, we're, well, we, we've, come to, we've come to win. We've trained hard. You know, no, 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 not so much. You know, you know he kind of did all the running. He kind of did all the training. He kind of did all of the sacrificing, you know. And then the, all, all these same guys have the balls in the post fight when their fighter doesn't win to turn around and say, well, he didn't do this. He didn't do that. Oh, it's we, we, we before the fight, and it's we, we, we. Like they're French, we oui, we. Oui. Uh, after the fight, when they win, but if they lose, it's he he he. You know, so I mean, this is my point. You know, the teams and and everybody gets so locked up. You know, I I I want to get back into doing some uh, promotional uh, events, some fights. Uh, you know, we're trying to get a stable of fighters together. And uh, the truth of the matter is, is nobody wants a fight. You know, I, you know, and, and the worst thing is if you're a young fighter. I hate to say it, man. Because I'm a parent too. But the worst thing is to have your pops be your trainer. Because very rarely does that work. It's, it's worked a couple of times. You know, we know who the successful father-son uh, trainers were. I mean, obviously Sean Porter and, and, and Mosley, you know, uh, Roy Jones. You know, uh, these guys, you know, but they're the, they're the exception to the rule. And you got, you know, I can't tell you how many uh, fighters I've seen uh, in the amateurs, you know, when, when uh, LDL TV used to broadcast a lot of amateur events and I did the uh, blow by blow and uh, you see all these uh, young, talented fighters and, and you go up to them and, you know, you're like, oh, you, you know, have any consideration to turn a pro next, you know, the dad is there, you know, and he's like, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm going to be taking care of my son's career and right off the bat. No, you're not. You can't. You know, it's like when I coached uh, sports for my kids. You know, I, I was involved with them, you know, all the way up, the, the peewee levels all the way up uh, until high school. But then once you get into the high school level, hey, you know what? You got to turn them over unless you're unless that's what you do. You got to pass the baton. You know, it's not about, you know, trying to to, to live through your kid, especially in boxing. You know, it, it, it's you can't. You got to have somebody that knows what they're doing. And that's the other thing. The best thing a parent could do for their young kid that wants to be a fighter is to make sure that they choose the right people, okay? Choose the right people. Don't try to do it on your own, but don't jump in the, into bed with somebody that's going to, you know, uh, treat them like, uh, like a, a steak, you know? And, and that's the problem with this sport. And then the other problem is everybody's afraid to lose a fight. You know, everyone, they don't want to lose a fight because the promoters will say you're not worth anything if you have a loss. The networks or the streaming companies or whatever, eh, well, he's got a loss, you know, it means he won't get a title. You know, the truth of the matter is, is that's not true. You know, I, I wish if, if I had the power to do it, what I would really like to do uh, is uh, try to, to create um, a, a, a local, you know, and, and when I say local, from town to town to town, um, you know, circuit uh, of fighters, you know. But the problem with that is there's not enough of them. There's not enough fighters anymore. You know, you go to a gym and maybe the gym has one fighter. Then they want to over, they want to protect them, you know. So it's it's a shame and uh, it's, uh, uh, it's the problem, you know. And the truth of the matter is, is um, I don't see it getting any better, to tell you the truth. You know, I mean, uh, boxing gyms, they're, they're actually hard to come by. You know, I mean, you go to uh, uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and there's, there's a lot of gyms, a lot of boxing gyms. Um, you know, New York City, I mean, there's not that many in New York City. You know, there's, there's really not. New York City was the hub of boxing. Las Vegas, there's some boxing gyms, of course, you would imagine. But most small towns and stuff, they don't have boxing gyms. They have gyms. They have workout centers. You know, so uh, you'll be uh, uh, going in there and you can hit a heavy bag. There may not be a ring in there, but there'll be an aerobics class for you, you know. But uh, but anyway, listen, uh, sorry for the late. Uh, here's the show, guys. 
but like I said, uh, I had something going on. I forgot all about uh, tomorrow. So today is tomorrow's show that you're getting to watch today. So, uh, hey, listen, next week when we come back, we'll be talking post-fight um, unofficial officials saying the kids don't want to put in the work uh, because boxing stuff. It is true. Today's young uh, people are looking for fast tracks for everything, careers, uh, sports, uh, the whole nine. But then again, like when I was a kid and I played football, um, you know, to have somebody, uh, you know, doing a story about you was, was pretty rare. You go to a high school football game now, and it's like, you know, the kids getting interviewed. I mean, they start at a very young age, and it's because of media, and it's because of, you know, content. Everybody needs content to stream and to, to get out there on the Internet. So different world, different world. So um, we will be uh, giving you a post-fight uh, Regis Progress and Devin Haney. Uh, we'll give you some breakdowns uh, on uh, the next couple of fights, which would be um, I believe the 16th will be the uh, Showtime card. I'll, I'll break down the, the fights and suffer through uh, one more uh, broadcast with Mario Ronaldo. Uh, and then the week after that, uh, right before Christmas, we all get treated to uh, a great card, um, the uh, heavyweight card, December 23rd. So we'll talk about that. And whatever else pops up between now and then, uh, remember, make sure you, you uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, also our podcast. Uh, if you need to uh, get the link, uh, I usually send them up on Facebook and, and Twitter. But if not, you can always go to BillyCBoxing.com and subscribe there. I know the news and stuff uh, and posters and all that isn't really up to date. Sorry. You know, I'm, I've been slacking. What can I tell you? Um, but uh, if you have any uh, questions, comments, concerns, and I did have a couple of emails I was going to read. They're looking, I'm looking at them right now, and I forgot about them. Uh, so if you had sent an email... Uh, and I didn't read it. I will read it next time. Uh, my bad. Like I said, uh, this was an impromptu show. So uh, email me, bill at billycboxing.com, or you can always go to the original email address, billy at talkin boxing. That's T A L K I N B O X I N G dot com. Thanks for joining me. And uh, until next week, uh, make sure you tune in same time, not this time, but the regular time, same bat channel. And until then, Ciao, baby.